Okay. So this is now, now that the pregame festivities are over, this is your formal welcome into Hop into Fusion, a software solution for every bunny. And let's talk about our ground rules and housekeeping. These should be familiar to you by now. Uh, we do ask you to put your questions in the chat today. It will definitely be turned on and off at different times. And 1.5 hours of ACV REP credit closed captioning is available for you to take advantage of as well. We have two participants today from Vespero. Uh, both are familiar to you if you have been part of our webinars or webinars from Vespero. Elizabeth Whitaker, technical writer for Vespero. And Ben Knowles, assistive technology engineer for Vespero, uh, specifically the Pasiello Group Interactive, which is a Vespero brand. Uh, they handle checking sites for accessibility and script writing and things like that. So while a lot of Vespero is hardware and software related, uh, TPG handles checking your stuff for accessibility. Um, Betsy Ann, let's talk about our challenges for today. Great, thank you, Paul. So uh, for those of you who are joining us today who are really familiar with JAWS or Zoom Text, those really popular products from Freedom Scientific and are hoping to learn more about Fusion, here are some challenges that might be familiar to you. Um, so while you might be familiar with JAWS and Zoom Text, Fusion might be kind of an unknown quantity. We find that teachers and consumers sometimes are unsure of what Fusion is and who should use it. Uh, there also might be confusion in the transition between the Fusion interface, which is different than the Zoom text and JAWS interfaces. So we'll look at that challenge today. And finally, we want to help you understand the difference between the Zoom text magnifier and reader versus the JAWS screen reader. Uh, we'll be digging into that today. Um, and let's, uh, Paul, I'll hand it back to you. Okay, so our learning objectives. We're going to fill your baskets with a lot of great stuff today. Uh, we've got we've got screen magnification, we've got screen reading, we've got everything. So we're going to identify three similarities between Zoom Text, JAWS, and Fusion because there's a lot similar. But we're also going to identify three differences between those products because there's a lot of differences as well. We'll compare two Fusion interface op interface options available for users. We'll learn keystrokes that access system control via the system tray. And finally, we're gonna review two resources for learning and teaching Fusion, because there's quite a bit out there that's available to you for learning and for teaching and a little bit of both. So with that, we are ready to begin the presentation. So we'll turn it over first to Ben. Hey everybody, um, this is Ben Knowles, uh, glad to be with you today. So we are going to talk about Fusion, um, which is JAWS and Zoom text running together. Um, that's really what Fusion is. Um, uh, next slide. So before we get into demoing and taking a look at Fusion, um, let's talk a little bit about each uh, each component, Zoom Text and JAWS. We're going to talk about well, you know, what they are and who are they designed for. Next slide. So first, what is Zoom Text? Um, based off the poll question, looks like you know a lot of us are familiar with Zoom Text. Um, so it is a uh, magnifier reader is screen magnification software for Windows that allows a user to magnify the screen change screen colors and customize various items like the mouse pointer and text cursor to make them easy to find and track on the screen. Um, Zoom text magnified reader has basic speech features for reading documents, web pages, and email. So the, the key word there is um, basic. Um, it's not gonna have uh, the bells and whistles that, that JAWS does. Uh, next slide. So who is it for? It's for any user with enough vision to see a computer screen who may require extra visual enhancements to more comfortably read and access screen content. So 
it's got basic screen basic um, you know, screen reading features because um, it assumes the user has uh, enough vision to where they don't need you know really robust screen reading um, next slide available versions of zoom text you have zoom text magnifier only which doesn't have any speech and then you have zoom text magnifier reader which is uh both magnification enhancements and uh and speech um if you have zoom text magnifier reader um you do have the option to to just run it as magnifier only um if you ever need that setting or you have a user that doesn't really want the reader features, they can go into settings and just disable that and just use magnification only. Uh, next slide. So what is JAWS? Job access with speech. It's a screen reader that provides access to windows. Um, information is spoken aloud as it appears and changes on the computer screen. Uh, next slide. Who is JAWS for? It's for uh, any computer user whose vision loss prevents them from seeing the screen content or navigating with the mouse. So we're using JAWS if, if magnification no, no, longer, no longer helps. Maybe, maybe we can see the screen a little bit, but it's not enough. You know, maybe it's more of a hindrance than anything else. So, so JAWS is for, for folks who uh, don't need magnification anymore and they're concentrating just, just on uh, accessing screen content. Uh, based off of speech feedback. <clears throat> so next slide. So finally, what is Fusion? Um, Fusion is JAWS and Zoom text running together. So what it is, it provides the features and benefits of having both Zoom text and JAWS in one package. Um, the two applications can be used together or separately to suit individual user preferences. So basically what this means is if you install Fusion, it installs, um, it puts three icons on the desktop. One is a Fusion icon, one is a Zoom text icon, one is a JAWS icon. So the user has the option to run just JAWS by itself or Zoom text by itself. Or if they launch Fusion, it runs uh, the Fusion package, which is both magnification and the full JAWS screen reader. So, uh, next slide. So who is Fusion for? <clears throat> we get uh, quite a few benefits from Fusion. It's perfect for individuals who over time want a smooth transition from using magnification to a full screen reader. Um, also benefits users with advanced progressive vision loss who can take advantage of magnification and full screen reading at the same time. So if a user has a visual condition that's progressive, you know, maybe today they're they can, they can use magnification and it helps them, but uh, they're noticing that their, maybe their acuity um, is going down. So if you're running Fusion, you can start to, to use more and more uh, screen reading commands and it, 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 it makes for a smoother transition as, uh, as the user loses their vision loss. Um, rather than just one day having to stop using magnification altogether and then learning a screen reading product with completely different keystrokes. Uh, running Fusion allows us to, to make that transition a bit smoother. Um, another really important feature uh, of Fusion or benefit of Fusion actually is it meets the needs of organizations seeking to provide tools for every level of visual impairment with a single license and installer. So, uh, for example, I worked in a nonprofit for quite a few years in Oklahoma City, and um, before Fusion came out, we, you know, we we would have to maintain licensing for for uh, Zoom text or JAWS separately. Um, with Fusion, when Fusion came out, you could buy one, you know, you could buy a license of Fusion and uh, install it on a machine, and regardless of who used that machine that if they were a JAWS user or a Zoom text user or they needed Fusion, it, they could start whatever software, whichever one of those they needed. So it was great for like a computer lab setup. Um, the users could come in and, and launch which, whichever of those uh, applications work for them. 
and on the you know on the side of managing you know licensing it just made it a lot easier because uh, you have fewer licenses that you have to to keep up with um so it was a big benefit to us at, at, at the nonprofit i was at so uh next slide so i just want to briefly talk about how we got to fusion how, how fusion became comprised of jaws and, and zoom text um so if we go back a few years, um, depending how long you've been involved with assistive technology, you probably are familiar with um, another screen reader called Window Lines, which was made by uh, GW Micro. Then we have JAWS from Freedom Scientific. Then you had Zoom Text Magnifier Reader, which was originally from a company called AI Squared. And then we had Magic magnifier reader, which was from Freedom Scientific. And the benefit of JAWS and Magic was that you could run them together. Um, Zoom text and uh, window eyes, uh, technically you could run those together. You could run G JAWS and Zoom text technically together, but it, they didn't communicate very well um, at all. So JAWS and Magic were designed uh, to work uh, to work together. So that allowed the users to that you know easier transition from from magnification to uh, to screen reader. Next slide. So in in 2014, AI Squared and GW Micro merged. So that put Zoom Text and Window Eyes under the same umbrella. And then in 2016, Zoom Text Fusion was released by AI Squared. So this was the first version of Zoom text that that had a full screen reader uh, as part of it. And then in 2016, VFO Group acquired AI Squared. 2017, Window Eyes was discontinued. And then in 2017, Fusion 11 was re released by Freedom Scientific, which was the first uh, version where Zoom text and JAWS were, were running together. Um, and then I put a note in here for those of you that are familiar with Magic. Uh, the official Freedom Scientific technical support for Magic ended um, on December thirty first of last year. So, um, so that's how we got to uh, to Fusion being comprised of Zoom texts and Jaws. Next slide. So, I want to do a quick comparison of speech output between uh, these different software. Because it's, as we transition from Zoom text to Fusion to JAWS, the, the difference, you know, the big difference is the level of uh, speech feedback we get. So I have a screenshot up on the screen of, it's like a navigation bar on a website and the about button has focus. So if I'm using Zoom text and I have the reader at the default verbosity, where verbosity means how much, it's the setting that controls how much the, uh, the reader feature of the screen reader reads to us. The more of the verbosity, the more it's going to tell. The more it's going to tell us. The less verbosity, the least it's going to tell us. So, Zoom text reader default verbosity. When I when I tab to uh, the about button, there it's just going to say about. It's going to read the label. If I modify the verbosity settings in Zoom text to its highest level of verbosity is going to now tell me about button. So it'll tell me the control type. Now, if I run Fusion, the default verbosity is going to, it's also going to say about button, but now it's going to tell me the state of the control. That it's collapsed. Um, this, this is a button you can, you can click on and, and expand a menu. So Fusion is going to say about button collapsed. And then finally, if I'm just running JAWS and I've got it, it is default beginner verbosity where it speaks the most. When I focus on that about button, it's gonna say about button collapsed to activate, press enter. So you'll see as we progress through these uh, applications, um, you get more and more speech output by default. And again, you can you can modify verbosity settings in each of these, in each of these programs, but you're gonna get the most verbosity um, with JAWS. Um, Okay, so I am going to, I need to switch over to my 
virtual machine to do some demonstrations. All right, and as Ben does that, we're going to put up our next poll question, question Betsy Ann. And uh, I saw some hands have gone up. Um, if you do have some questions, uh, please type those in the chat for us so we can attend to those and answer them. Our question, when Fusion is installed, users can do which? Uh, pick one, run JAWS by itself, run Zoom text by itself, run JAWS and Zoom text together using the Fusion interface or all of the above. When Fusion's installed, uh, you can, can do what? You can run JAWS by itself, run Zoom text by itself, run JAWS and Zoom text together using the Fusion interface or all of the above. Uh, the chat is open. And I had a question as that's going on, Ben. You were uh, you were talking about uh, two versions of Zoom text. Does that literally mean that you can purchase it with no speech, or does it just mean that you have the option to um, turn speech off and leave it off? You can uh, you can purchase it with with no speech. Honestly, I haven't. Seen, I'm, I'm assuming that's still available. Zoom text magnifier only. It, it's more. Most of the folks I worked with all had the magnifier reader um, version, uh, but I believe it's still available where you can buy Zoom text magnifier only. Um, but if you have Zoom text magnifier reader, you can go into the Zoom text settings and, and tell it to launch Zoom text in magnifier only mode if you prefer that. Do you know if somebody has only the magnifier, if they can get the reader later on? They should be able to. Um, I'm sorry, I don't know off the top of my head, but I'm sure, I'm, 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 I'm pretty sure they can upgrade that. All right, perfect. Thank you. So it looks like some questions are coming in now. I apologize, I was muted for a second. Uh, one of the questions that came is, is can you use Fusion for someone who starts off with Zoom text, but visual fatigue increases so they switch to JAWS? Yeah, for sure. That's a really good use case of, uh, of Fusion. Um, maybe they, maybe, yeah, maybe at the beginning of the day, they're good to go with, with, with using their vision, but if, if their visual fatigue gets to a point where they just, you know, they really can't, or it's it's too much of a uh, problem to use their vision as they go through the day. If they have Fusion installed, they can completely rely on the screen reader. You know, they'll they'll need to be trained um, on how to use uh, the Jaws piece of Fusion. But yeah, that's a good, that's a really good use case. Um, they could use Zoom Text Magnifier Reader, but um, again, they're gonna, if they're running Fusion, they have more options to uh, with, the, with the screen reading piece so they can really rest their eyes if, if they know um, enough of the JAWS commands to, to use the screen reader. If you wanna think about this in another way that, that may help, if you think about a student that is a large print user or has been a large print reader and then maybe it is um, getting to a situation where they are not able to read the large print as well so you start teaching them braille this is really a very similar situation absolutely great um another question that came in it's kind of in a similar vein if the, if the person needs a screen reader more for content and can use magnification to navigate with a touch screen, is Fusion the best option? Hmm. Um, I honestly haven't used uh, touch screen much with, with Fusion. Um, and Elizabeth, I'm not sure if you have any feedback on on the touchscreen piece. Um, that's yeah, I'm not I'm not I'm not too sure if they're using a. Can you read the question one more time? Yes. Um, if the person needs a screen reader more for content and can use magnification to navigate with a touchscreen, 
is fusion the best option? Well, I would, I don't know. I would, I would, I would use the keyboard over a touch screen. Um, in my opinion, if they're, especially if they're a screen reader user, like I, we're talking about a windows based machine, obviously, cause this is a, this fusion is for windows. Um, while there is some touchscreen support for zoom text, you know, I would, I would, I would push them towards, uh, or talk to them about using the keyboard for, for keyboard navigation with, with that. I'm sorry if that answer isn't very clear, but. No, no and this is, this is Liz. I'd like to weigh in here on that too. Sorry, Ben. Sure. Um, I, I agree with you on that. I, now I personally have used the touch screen with JAWS and there, I mean, it is possible. And, you know, I guess if the person is used to using the touch screen and can navigate with it, but if you're running JAWS, um, you know, JAWS is very keyboard driven. You have to you know, you, I mean, if you're a mouse user, you can use the mouse, you know, still if you have some vision, but if you're primarily using JAWS for content, I would say, yeah, you probably want to use the keyboard. Um, and, and, you know, you can use a few of those touch screen gestures, but you really want to concentrate on those keyboard commands, like Ben said. So would that right. mean that they would stick with JAWS or would that would they want to have both? If they're going to use the keyboard exclusively, maybe that, I think that's would be the follow-up question perhaps i would um yeah i would if magnification helps uh yeah if they're i would definitely use fusion um give it a try and then they can you know if they're using the keyboard they can control you know the screen reader portion as well as the magnification with their with their keyboard and i'll demonstrate some of that here in just a sec before you demonstrate, Ben, do you have time for a few more questions or uh, do we want to hold and, and move forward no, yeah, uh, we with can the ask. content? We can, a few yeah, more? Can, Excellent. Mm -hmm. um, so a question had come in through email um, earlier and we wanted to make sure we addressed it. Um, the question is, I just started my student with Fusion and the JAWS settings seem to be wrong because none of the commands are correctly working and you can't type on a Google Doc. How can we fix this? Um, I just want to say one, and, and Ben, you probably have stuff you want to add to this. In Google Docs, you have to make sure if JAWS is running, well, if any screen reader, you have to make sure you turn on screen reader support and Braille support. Even if you're not using Braille, you still need to turn it on because some of those commands won't work unless you do. So that might be what's going on there. It, those settings might not be turned on within Google Docs. So you go to settings and accessibility, and then you can turn those on, or actually you can press control alt Z to toggle uh, screen reader support on and off and control alt H for braille support. Great, thank you for that, Elizabeth. And, and for this um, audience member who has this question, we're gonna share um, Elizabeth and Ben's contact information towards the end of this webinar. So I think if you have specific questions, Elizabeth and Ben, would it be correct to say that they can send those to you? Sure, absolutely. Great, thank you. Thank you. Um, a few more uh, questions just about the basics of Fusion before we jump into a demonstration. Uh, what is the most compatible device to download Fusion? Um, well, it's got, you know, um, you need to be running Windows. Um, and as far as uh, system requirements, the Windows system requirements, uh, I'll just read them off here real quick. Um, it, you know, recommends uh, i5 or i7 processor, um, eight gig of recommend, eight gig of hard drive, uh, or I'm um, eight gig of RAM, I'm sorry, is recommended. And then if a solid state drive, um, hard drive, that's, uh, that's recommended. You don't have to have that, but it helps with the performance. Um, so yeah, you wanna be, it, it'll work on Windows 10, Windows 7, um, I know most 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 folks have transitioned to Windows 10. 
Um, and you can find those system requirements on, uh, on the Freedom Scientific uh, page if you need to take a closer look. But a solid state drive, um, that seems to really help performance. I'll mention that. All right, well, thank you. We'll hold the rest of the questions for later so that we can get to the demonstration. But first, I'm going to end polling for our, our quick check-in question on Fusion. So for the question, when Fusion is installed, users can run JAWS by itself, run Zoom text by itself, run JAWS and Zoom text together under, using the Fusion interface, or all of the above, 88% said all of the above. Now, Ben, which is the correct response? All of the above. Fantastic. So thank you guys for checking in with us. Zoom or Fusion runs JAWS. Uh, it can run JAWS by itself. It can run Zoom text by itself, and it can run them together using Fusion. That's really the, uh, the benefit of this software solution. And then we'll hand it back to you for your demonstration. All right, great. I'm gonna share my screen. All right. Can somebody let me know if they can hear this? Full speech. Yes. Yes, yep. it's coming through. Okay, great. So, <clears throat> Excuse me. So this is this is Fusion, uh, the Fusion interface. And first of all, I want to point out on the desktop over here, we have there's the JAWS icon, the Zoom text icon, and the Fusion icon. So when we're saying that you could run any of these, what I've done here is I've I've launched Fusion um, by double clicking this icon. But if I wanted to, I could simply you know I could close Fusion and just I could launch Zoom text by itself or JAWS by itself. So with Fusion, the first thing you might know if you haven't seen this before, if you've used Zoom text, it looks really similar to Zoom text. I mean, almost almost exactly the same. The colors are a little different. Um, and, it's, and instead of saying Zoom text here, uh, Zoom text menu, it says Fusion menu. Uh, the other thing that you will notice if we go down to the system tray down here by the clock, um, there's a JAWS icon. There's JAWS for Fusion 2021. So we have JAWS running down here in the system tray, and then we have the, the, the Fusion interface up here, which is basically the, the Zoom text uh, menu. Um, and just to confirm, can one of you guys let me know, can you see the magnification enhancements right now? Can you see that it's magnified? And there's a yellow pointer. Yes, we can see the 1.8 zoom level and a, a, the yellow. Okay, great. Pointer. Yeah. Okay, so just to get familiar a little bit with with the menu here. Um, again, it's very similar to to Zoom text. I have uh, I have the default uh, Fusion settings running. I do have uh, speech disabled just. Uh, for now, so it doesn't interrupt me. But if we just briefly look at the Fusion interface, you know, the magnifier tab is is just like Zoom text. We can turn on color enhancements. We can um, do what we're used to doing using Zoom text on, on the magnifier tab. If we go over to the reader tab, we'll see that this is also, you know, at first glance, just like uh, the Zoom text reader tab. Um, we can modify, you know, keyboard echo. We can modify mouse echo. You'll see that these are grayed out, like words and keys and words. These are grayed out because I have speech uh, on demand at the moment. So I have speech disabled, basically, or muted. Um, so with with the reader tab, when Fusion is running, we can still uh, modify a few settings: uh, speech rate, keyboard. Uh, mouse echo and verbosity. Uh, you still have the app reader, uh, the reading tools. Uh, one difference is if I if I expand the voice menu, um, you'll see some differences in the settings here. We're going to take a look here in just a sec. One other thing I want to point out: I'm going to turn speech on. Full speech. 
you'll notice the default speech uh, or the default um, synthesizer in Fusion is Eloquence, which is the JAWS title is Fusion is the JAWS uh, default synthesizer. You can just like in JAWS, uh, though you can change that synthesizer if you want. Um, if we go to settings here, menu, leave it. menu settings. Uh, leave it menu. And you'll notice this if you're familiar with jaws this is a this is a voice adjustment uh window from from jaws and we can change that profile Hello, to microsoft you know vocalizer express voice adjustment dialogue lee premium high voice adjustment dialogue so we can we can change that voice back to tom or one of the other um vocalizer expressive voices so so yeah that's one of the first things you may notice when you install fusion is that it's using um a different synthesizer than zoom text um, and you if you've used jaws before you'll recognize that that voice um let me disable that Speech on demand. and you can also again add remove voices if you want to download uh some of the other you know uh voices that are out there you can get some with some you know, cool accents and stuff that you may enjoy so you can get those from this menu um So the other thing under the tools menu, if you're comparing this to, to Zoom text, you'll see a few differences. There's uh, the listening tools, background reader and recorder are, are disabled um, when you're running Fusion. You'll also notice under camera on, on Fusion, you'll have these, this OCR and picture smart icons. Uh, it's, they're, they're grayed out right now because I don't have a camera, uh, like a Pearl cam camera hooked up but you may notice that those are present um, in the Fusion interface. Uh, and then just to compare it, for those of you that aren't real familiar with, with Zoom text, here's a screenshot of, um, so underneath, here's the Fusion menu, and below that I have a screenshot of the Zoom text reader menu. So you can see that, you know, it's it's very, it's almost exactly the same at first glance. You'll notice that the rates are different, the voice rate. Um, uh, and then if I switch over to magnifier again, uh, you know, it's exactly the same. So, um, so yeah, if you're familiar with Zoom text, you'll you'll be familiar with with you know 99% of this uh, this interface here. Uh, Another thing I want to point out under the Fusion menu, um, for those of you that uh, are familiar with with JAWS, um, laptop versus desktop uh, layout. If I go to this, is a feature that's not in Zoom Text that is in Fusion. This hotkey layout option. Um, we have desktop and lay desktop layout mode, laptop layout mode. Now the difference between this is um, with with JAWS. For those of you familiar with JAWS, you know by default the insert key is the JAWS key, and a lot of laptops uh, either don't have um, a numpad with where the insert key is the you know the zero key when numlock is off or they have an insert key that's hard to reach or that you have to press a function key to activate. So the workaround for that in JAWS is to have a, a laptop layout, which uses the caps lock key, is the JAWS key. Um, and those of you that use Zoom text know that by default, the caps lock key is also the Zoom text key. So this, uh, I wanna point this out because this can create a little bit of confusion if you're, if you're new to this. I'm going to turn speech on. Full speech. So escape. If I press caps lock C right here. Color enhancements enabled. That that turns on color enhancements. Color enhancements disabled. Um, if I press insert T, which is the JAWS command for reading title. Title is Fusion Professional Pages Magnify. So he reads the title of the window. If I change this expand uh, menu, hockey layout key. to Laptop. Load laptop. 
leaving menus fusion now if i hit caps lock c to toggle the color not available outside of tables it, it doesn't work it changes it changes things up so basically what it does when we switch to uh, a laptop mode title is fusion Pro i just press caps lock t um when, when we switch to laptop layout basically what we have to do for our zoom text commands is just add alt to the keystroke so Caps lock C to toggle color becomes alt caps C. Color enhancements enabled. Color. So I just wanted to point that out because um, that that is a difference that, that folks may run into. But you can always go to um, menu hot hotkey layout load desktop. Explain these layout options. Leaving menu, and it'll give you a description of kind of what I just went over. Uh, it'll give you more detail of. of what the settings are and, and uh, why uh, why we need those. So I'm going to switch back. Expanded to... menu, disable fusion, B, help, leaving menu. Another thing real quick under fusion. Expand. Uh, menu, hot key, command keys. Leaving menus, fusion menu. If you ever want to look up your Zoom text command keys, you can always go here and, and you got your, uh, you can search for a, a keystroke if you need it. Escape, fusion. Okay, so those are the things I wanted to to point out, um, specifically with with the fusion menu. Again, the magnifier enhancements are, are extremely similar. Uh, really, they're exactly the same. You just run into some differences under under the reader. Speech. So now I think we're gonna, Elizabeth is gonna chat a little bit about um, uh, the, the JAWS piece of Fusion, the, the screen reading piece. Sure, thanks. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna talk a little bit about JAWS and some things that you would need to know if, you know, if, if you have someone, you're working with someone who's new to JAWS or maybe, you know, someone who's been using magnification and they're new to speech, um, there, there are some things that you need to know, and, and then Ben's going to help me out and, and demonstrate a few things for you guys. So one thing I want to mention here are a couple of differences that you'll find if you're used to seeing JAWS running by itself, chances are you have it running in its own window. And when that happens, you can navigate over to that window, you can press the Alt key and go to the menu bar, just like you do with you know, Microsoft Office uh, products or other applications. You can run JAWS in the system trace so that it doesn't have its own window. So that's kind of out of the way. And in that situation, you can press insert. You know, remember Ben said the insert is the JAWS key, insert J. So if you have it running in its own window and you press insert J, focus will go straight to the JAWS window. But if it's running from the system tray and you press insert J, focus goes to that system tray and it accesses those context menus there where you can change a lot of the settings. When you're running Fusion and you have that Fusion interface, you will get to all of the JAWS settings by pressing Insert J because it's running in uh, the system tray. So you're going to press Insert J and when you do that, then you're going to have access to go in and uh, you know set if, if there are any Braille settings that you need to set, if, if, you're, if your student happens to be using Braille, if you need to set speech settings, voice settings, you just you have access to the entire settings center and all of the other JAWS features. Now, oh. as Ben also said, JAWS is very keyboard driven. Well, it is keyboard driven. So if you have someone who is going to be using JAWS primarily or who is transitioning to speech, those keyboard commands are going to be extremely important. So uh, I just want to show you here just a few things that you can do when reading documents and kind of introduce you to uh, reading on the web. But I do want to point out that, you know, there, there are a lot of keyboard commands and there are ways to look those up uh, because, you know, if you're like me, you know, I remember the ones I use most often. And if there's one that I, I need that I haven't used in a very long time, you know, I might have to look it up. But fortunately, there is something called command search, which I'm going to tell you about here in just a little bit, that you can use to look up JAWS commands. So uh, we're going to start out with a document. 
And Ben, I'll have you go Perfect. ahead and switch over to that. I'll go ahead and I'll go ahead and press insert J real quick just to yeah, so we can sure. see what Pause context menu run from tray menu O option sub menu. So here's the here's the context menu uh Elizabeth was talking about when we press JAWS key J or insert J. Utility sub menu. Jaws. And we can navigate that and access what we need to. Do, so, Escape. all right. So Leave I'm going to switch over to Word. Task switching. Test document. Dot doc dash Word. Edit. So before um, Elizabeth starts out here, we know that you know Fusion is still running. Color so enhancements. I could have color. I'll. Uh, I could leave color enhancements on. We can see that my corner is still um, large yellow. So again, we still have the magnification. And I have magnification up a little bit. I'll bump that up a little more. 1.4, 1.6, 1.8. There we go. Color. All right. Okay. And yeah, thank you for, for demonstrating the um, system tray there. And just to let you guys know as well, when you heard JAWS say, you know, options, submenu, utility submenu, whenever you hear JAWS say submenu, that, you know, obviously means there's another, another menu there. There's another layer to that. So you can press right arrow to open, for example, option submenu. If you press right arrow, it opens that menu and you can just navigate with your up and down arrow keys. And then to close that submenu and go back to that main set of menus there, you just press left arrow and then you can press escape to get out of it completely. Okay, so we've got a document here on the screen and because JAWS offers full speech and you have all these features, you are able to read and edit the document completely with speech. So you have your typical keyboard commands. When I say typical, uh, what I mean is you use these keyboard commands in a wide range of applications. You know, anytime you're editing any kind of document, whether it's Word, uh, you know, a, a Google Doc or any other type of document, email, you're going to use your up and down arrow keys to navigate by line, um, right and left, navigate a character at a time. And then if you add control to the right and left arrow keys, that allows you to navigate by word. So let's let's start out by just pressing down arrow and Reading Manhattan, a line here, left line or two. Parent, New York County, right parent is the geographically smallest and most densely populated. Borough is home to Central Park and of the city skyscrapers and most is sometimes locally. Okay. Comma. So typically when you're reading a line, you're at the beginning of that line. So um, typically. So you can you can always press the home key to make sure that you are, and then you can Control Comma. right arrow. Go ahead and, and show that. Bravo. Can. Sure. Yeah. So there's the home key. We're at the beginning of the line. Comma. I'm control right arrow. Is home to central park. Control left arrow. Central. Goes to the previous park. Yeah. So those are those are just some some navigation keys that allow you to move to a specific word if you wanted to add a letter, add a word you know, delete something, you have all of those capabilities, you know, using JAWS. Um, you know, you can select text, you can copy and cut and paste and all those things using the keyboard. Um, one thing I will show you, if you're in an application, for example, Microsoft Word, and you want to know some keyboard commands that you can use, you can press insert H for hotkeys. You can also press insert W to get some, some keys. So if you press, let's see what happens when you press insert H. Let's show you what happens there. Link set quick settings, JAWS key, JAWS. Link set quick settings, JAWS key plus V. Link say the current field control plus JAWS key plus numpad five. So yeah, it popped up uh, a, quite a long list of uh, available hotkeys in the virtual viewer. Yeah, and you can navigate that those and those are some JAWS keys. You can navigate that virtual viewer with your arrow keys. And then when you're finished, you can just press escape uh, to get out of that. And you can do that whether you're in Word, Internet Explorer. Well, I say Internet Explorer, Chrome, um, Edge, you know, any of your browsers or your Outlook or any of those applications, you can do that. So I just wanted to show you how to do that. And I'll, sh I'll show insert W just real quick, too. The following MS Word shortcut keys may be useful. Useful. So this is a list, another list. So 
insert W or the Windows shortcuts like Control O, Control N, like the built-in word shortcuts. And again, I can just I can read with my arrow keys, or I can press Escape to exit. Escape bro is top of. And just okay. to specify here, just in case, because uh, I know this can be a bit confusing as well. So you may be wondering what the difference is between Windows keys and JAWS keys. Like Ben said earlier, insert is the JAWS key, which means if you press insert with a letter, for example, insert T to read a window title or insert down arrow to read from the cursor down, you know, read the entire document. That is a JAWS key. It uses the insert key. Uh, that's a JAWS command. But if you have something like control O for open, control S for save, those are specific to Microsoft Word or whatever application you're using. Those can be used whether you are running JAWS or not. So um, those are window, that's why those are Windows keyboard commands. So that's just a little bit about navigating documents. I just wanted to explain a little bit about how you can, uh, you know, move around a document and how you could edit using JAWS. Let's go ahead and switch over to a web page. And I want to mention a couple of things there. Fusion, Fusion training and dash freedom science. Fusion training. Yet. All right. Okay, we're on our fusion training page, which we're going to tell you a little more about later. Some of the training that you can find on our site. Um, so Ben is on this web page, and Jaws will read. If you use your arrow keys once again, Jaws will read the information on the web page. So you can just you know up and down arrow those the same commands, those control right arrow, and control left arrow, and so forth. Visited link crap hall today. Link one. Okay. So because if you're, you know, if you're reading a web page and you're looking for information and you need to find it quickly and you, you know, you want to, you want to navigate that web page and find out what's there, but you know, you, you want to do it efficiently. We have what are called JAWS quick navigation keys, or we call them quick nav keys. Those are keys that have been specified uh, for a certain tasks. For example, the letter H navigates, if you just press H, it navigates through headings on a page if there are any. Let's go ahead and, and try that. I think there's some headings here. Fusion training heading level one. Getting started with fusion heading level two. Fusion and as you notice, oh, sorry. Uh, it'll tell you the heading level. So, you know, heading level one is, is a title heading and um, heading level two is like subtitle or subsection. So JAWS will indicate what level that heading is. Um, so you have a lot of those. T is for table, H is for heading. So there are just a lot of ways to navigate. F navigates you through form fields on a page, which are things like, you know, the search box you type in, the check boxes and, you know, drop down combo boxes and things. Um, and so, you know, I know we're throwing a lot of information here about JAWS at you, but I just wanted you to see how you can navigate uh, on a web page using JAWS and it will read the information that's there, all the text information that's there. In this, uh, I'll throw in Elizabeth. Um, so these quick keys that you're talking about, H, uh, quick navigation keys, this is something if, if someone is just using Zoom text by itself, that wouldn't work. This is the JAWS piece, you know, of Fusion that's allowing us to quickly jump, Wrapping the top. You know, quickly jump to that search box there. Or again, if I want to jump to the heading, Fusion training heading. I can press H and my magnified view follows that as I press Get that. Fusion, Fusion, FA, Fusion, the ultimate. So as I press that and it moves down the screen, the, the magnified view goes with it. So again, I can use my mouse or I can increased magnification, but if, you know, if I'm a Fusion user and I'm transitioning to, to using a screen reader, and, you know, we just saw that the search box is way up here in the top right. If I'm, if I'm down at the bottom of this page, if I know the, the form, the quick key command for edit box is E, if I press it. Wrapping the top, search colon edit. I'm in it. Enter, banner region. And there it is. So I can get there quicker than, and having to use my mouse. So I just wanted to point that out real quick. That's the JAWS piece. Yeah, thank you for that. Because, and you know, JAWS does, you know, have a lot of keyboard commands. It, it is a, something that if you're going to transition to JAWS, you know, you have to learn. 
but like Ben was saying earlier, you have the, uh, the you know, capability here of still using that magnification while you're able to trans transition over to using a screen reader. And there are a lot of ways that you can learn those keyboard commands, um, which, like I said, we'll tell you more about our training here in just a few minutes. But uh, that just wanted to quickly show you how you could navigate a document and a web page. All right. Um, <clears throat> did we want to demo anything else while I'm sharing my screen? Let's talk a little bit about command search for just a second. There's a okay. JAWS feature that is wonderful. Speaking of all these keyboard commands, you know, if you if you're not sure how to perform a certain command, you want to know what that keyboard that keystroke is. JAWS has a feature called command search, and it's a layered command, which means you're going to press insert space to start the layer, the command layer, and then you're going to press another letter to activate the command that you want to do, which in this case is command search. So you're going to press insert space and then the letter J. I'll press insert space. Space. And we hear that beep or the pop, mm -hmm. and then I'll press J. Search for JAWS commands dialog. Search colon edit. Search for colon edit forms mo. And let's see, let's search for, what's a good one we can search for here? Um, headings search, list? Yeah, let's search for headings list. GS. There we go. Heading level three link headings. So list. I just typed in headings. And I'm use, I use my arrow key to go down. Heading level three link headings list. JAWS key plus F6. Okay, so what that means is that if you press insert F6 while you're on a web page, you'll get a list of headings on that page and you can navigate through them with your arrow keys and then press enter on the one that you want. That's what that keyboard command is for. This plays a dialog. Yep, and it's got a little bit more of a description below that. Yeah. And if you had typed in like title, it would give you the insert T command for title. Or if you typed in, um, you know, tables, mm -hmm. it would give you this commands for reading tables. I think I confused it here. Enter, search, escape, escape. Sorry, I just mashed a bunch of keystrokes. <laughs> I do that too. <laughs> so there are so many ways to customize JAWS. There are a lot of ways to go in. You can... You know, you can pick the voice that you want, the synthesizer that you want. Um, there are just so, you know, so many different things that you can do to customize. And let's also talk a little bit about speech on demand versus full speech here um, about when, you know, when you might want to use that. Um, so JAWS has under those, the, it's another layered command, so you use insert space. So you can set it to full speech, which is what we're using now, or you can set it to speech on demand. So if you only want to hear certain things uh, while you're navigating, while you're um, using magnification, or maybe while you're transitioning, but you really don't necessarily want full speech, but maybe, you know, you want to use, use it sometimes, you can choose speech on demand. You can also mute your speech, which is, is also used if you're using a braille display and you want to turn off the speech, but you, you know, you want to have that braille. Um, so I just wanted to let you know, you press insert space, which one, once again, activate your command layer and the letter S for space. speech on demand. Speech on demand. So that just turned on speech on demand. So now as I, I'm pressing alt tab and I'm not hearing anything because I have speech on demand selected. And if I down arrow through this document, I'm not hearing anything. But if I press a like a read all command, so speech is on demand, it should read this for me. F New York City and contains the headquarter. Yep, let's go back to the top. Boroughs of New York City, heading level one, Manhattan, Manhattan left pair in New York County. So yeah, like Elizabeth said, if if I'm using magnification, maybe I don't want it to speak all the time. Maybe I just want it to speak when I give it a direct, you know, 
jaws command like insert down arrow to to read or say the current word um so doing the insert space and s uh and putting it on speech on demand um is a good option and just real quick if i go to the fusion interface and go to the reader tab you can also do that by uh, clicking the voice menu here and selecting speech on demand or full speech. So insert space S or you can go to this. But I think that's a good thing to point out, Elizabeth, especially if you're still using magnification and you, maybe you feel like JAWS talks too much. Um, right. Yeah. And it helps you get used to the JAWS commands because like, you know, Ben just showed you the insert down arrow to say all. And, you know, you have some of those commands that are very useful. It gives you a chance to get used to those. It gives you an opportunity to get used to hearing that speech, but it's not giving you full speech. So, and pressing insert space and S again, it's a toggle. So that turns it on and off. Um, and when speech on demand is on, you can mute speech by pressing insert space and shift S. And that's a toggle as well, I do believe. Yeah, it's a toggle as well. But yeah, that's an important feature. And I know I'll use it sometimes even just with the Braille display. So it, you know, it just really depends on how much speech you want to hear or need to hear at any given moment. So I'll press that quick. Full speech. Now he's back on full speech. All right. Do we want to Julian, take some questions Julian, now, or do you have anything else that you Julian, want to demo there? Um, no, I think, so. I think questions would be good. All right. Awesome. So I'm opening up the chat. Feel free to drop in any questions that you might have at this point in the webinar about Fusion. So uh, a question that had come in earlier was, when updating to a newer version of Fusion, does the program prompt to carry forward past configuration settings? Yes. Uh, it's a good, good question. For the, I'll, I'll mention this uh, with, um, with the latest version of Fusion, it should, for the Zoom text settings, it should copy them over automatically. For the JAWS settings, yeah, it should prompt you yeah. to say, we found a previous version of JAWS. Do you want to import those over? But prior to that, the Zoom text settings wouldn't, wouldn't be auto automatically imported. The JAWS, you'll, you'll get the JAWS prompt um, to, to, in, to import the previous settings. But with 2021, it'll automatically do it for you if it sees a previous version of Zoom text user settings on there. It won't prompt you about it. It should just do it. Yeah. And that's an important distinction there because, and that's a great question. Yeah. Another question uh, that has come in, do people typically just use JAWS in place of the Zoom text reader with Fusion? Uh, you know, I, th Elizabeth, you can chime in here. I think, uh, I think it just has to do with if, if they know, you know, if they know about it, like if you've used app reader for a really long time and you know that, you know, alt caps a is going to start app reader. Um, if you don't know that insert down arrow is going to read that to you, you, yeah, you may, maybe you still use app reader, but I mean, if, if, if you're shown the insert down arrow, the jaws say all command, well, you know, it'll begin reading and it'll put your focus indicator around it. Um, you know, the user may find that the JAWS command is much easier than pressing alt caps A and then, you know, maybe having to click to get it to start reading or, or um, get it stop reading. So I don't know that I've seen users use one over more than the other. I guess I could say that if, if the users I've shown that, you know, that you can use the JAWS reading commands versus the app reader commands, they usually go with the JAWS commands. Yeah, and I think that's important to know as you're transitioning too. If, if someone is transitioning and they're, you know, they're used to using Zoom text, the app reader and, and you know, that speech, um, you know, but they need more speech, then those commands are, are going to be very valuable and, and they're, you know, going to be similar, not, not difficult to learn, so. Um, thank you for that. Um, for another question, uh, and this one is is uh, 
again about those commands, can a user with physical disabilities use sticky keys for the key combination? Yes. Um, for you can use the like there's a setting in JAWS where you can make the JAWS key a sticky key. Um, so if if you press, you know, if you have to press insert T to read the title, um, you can change that setting in JAWS so that the JAWS key acts like a sticky key. And then you can use your um, your sticky keys like the Windows sticky keys that you're used to. Great, thank you. Um, another question, is there anything in Fusion that can be controlled by voice? Does it interact any time with voice assistant? Yes. Um, in fact, I'm going to share my screen real quick again, just so I can show that. I'm glad that's a good question. So 20, starting with version 2021, um, JAWS, JAWS Zoom Text and Fusion, you have the, uh, the voice assistant feature. So that works in Fusion as well. So I just had it disabled during this, uh, this demo because um, I didn't want to to hear me say anything. But yes, that is a feature of, of Fusion too. Great, thank you. We've got lots of questions coming in. And folks, if you are um, just learning about Fusion, if you've got more questions or you've got ideas for future webinars, I'm gonna put my email in the chat. You are free to email me any um, questions or ideas you have about future webinars for Fusion. I know we only um, talk about Fusion a few times a year on our webinars. Uh, so let us know if you've got questions. We're also going to share Ben and Elizabeth's contacts at the end of this webinar. And I believe you can reach out to them with more specific questions about Fusion. Um, for those of you who are, are really learning a lot uh, during this webinar. All right, one more uh, question and then we'll turn it back over to you guys to do um, any more demonstration that you have. Could you speak a little more to the camera OCR menu? Can you interface a Perl camera with Fusion in lieu of using a program like Open Book? Sorry, I was muted. Uh, yes. Um, in fact, um, let me plug my Perl in here real quick, and I'll show you what that menu looks like when it's when it's plugged in. Um, so yeah, your answer, you can use a Perl with Fusion, yes. Um, you also have the, uh, the OCR features of JAWS. Let me uh, share my screen again real quick. Okay, so I plugged my camera in. So I'm on the tools tab and we have the camera settings. Uh, if I go to settings, it should have per, well, I wonder if I have to restart that. If I click OCR, yeah, it sees, it sees the pearls connected. Um, but yeah, to answer your question, yes, you can use the pearl. Um, when you plug it in those, those icons here will be um, uh, available. And then, you know, you can, you also have the, I don't wanna to jump too far ahead, but uh, you, can, you can use uh, all the JAWS OCR, you know, the layered keystroke. Well, oh, I have my speech disabled. So. Full speech. Space o -O -C -R. You can use the OCR features of JAWS um, when you're running Fusion. So, and that's that could be a, a topic for another session, honestly. But uh, do you have anything to add to that, um, Elizabeth? Um, no, just just yeah, those OCR features, and uh, there have been some updates in in the you know uh, 2021. Uh, with convenient OCR. So there's just a lot of ways to use convenient OCR now. So um, yeah, you can OCR a document directly to Microsoft Word. You can uh, OCR PDF files that are not accessible. And uh, you can OCR printed 
documents. So, you know, if you had a student who, if you had a book or printed document that wasn't enlarged, you could OCR that. And then, you know, with Fusion, the student would be able to read it magnified and, and have that speech capability if they needed it as well. Great, thank you. So how about um, we turn off the chat for just a moment to make sure we get to all of the content in this webinar. If we've got time at the end, we will certainly bring up these questions. We really appreciate you guys being such active participants uh, in this webinar. Um, but let's turn off the chat and uh, finish up our presentation. All right, so I've got the the fusion training side up here, Elizabeth, if you want to chat about that for a little sure. bit. Sure, absolutely. So um, if you go to freedomscientific.com slash training, you'll see all of our training uh, content. There's some training for just JAWS, for just Zoom text, and then fusion, which is the one that Ben is, is showing you now. So there you'll find uh, on each of those pages, you'll find answers to frequently asked questions, um, on the JAWS page specifically, you'll find a link to our surf sub training, which is uh, less self-paced lessons on navigating the internet with JAWS. Uh, so there you, you have some practice pages, you have some uh, lessons that you can go through. So we have the surf sub training. We also have on our training page, a link to our training podcast, uh, which those are audio podcasts taken from our webinars and other training events. We have a link to upcoming webinars, a link to archived webinars. We also have, and this is fairly new, a link to our teachers page. And there we have a lot of resources that can help if you're looking for, you know, typing programs, um, how to, you know, help your students learn keyboarding and enhance those skills. We also have a new training series, which is a JAWS training series for training teachers, uh, you know, AT instructors, anyone who wants to learn how to use JAWS can use these modules. And we, we put one up every month. In fact, we're getting ready to put module eight up and you can go through those. There's a lot of information there. There's some videos. Uh, there's there's quiz for each each module. You have lessons within those modules. So definitely go to freedomscientific.com slash training and check out uh, those pages. We have a lot of resources there. If you have any questions or if you have any suggestions, trainings that you think that we need to uh, create, we are happy to do that. We love suggestions. So send us an email to training at vespero.com. That's training at vespero.com. All right, I think that's what we wanted to cover. That's Ian. Excellent. So, how about we uh, go to this last poll question? Sure, let's do that. And while that's up, I'm going to answer another question that's come in, and maybe this will help folks understand a little bit about fusion. But first, the poll question. And so, the question is who can benefit from fusion? Choose one. Users with advanced or progressive vision loss who need both magnification and full speech. Companies and agencies who serve individuals who are blind and visually impaired. Users who are transitioning from magnification to full speech or all of the above. Here's a way that you can look at fusion and maybe this will help understand. We had a question come in about is it, do you need JAWS and Zoom text in order to get Fusion? Fusion is a particular product. If you think of Microsoft Office for a moment, if you buy Office, you get Word, you get Excel, you get whatever is included with it now. It seems to change from version to version. But if you buy Office, of course, you don't need to buy Word separately. Um, I think you can still buy Word separately, but... If you can, and that's all you need, that's great. But if you want all of those programs together in one package, you buy Office. If you want only JAWS or only Zoom text, you can buy those. If you want them separately because you're not planning on running them together, you can do that. If you think that 
you may or you're sure that you may be using those together or you think it's possible that you may have a student or a client that may need those together, then by all means, um, get Fusion. Uh, so if you need them together, think of it as, as the Microsoft Office for uh, adaptive technology. You have everything in one package. Maybe that will help clarify a little bit uh, what, what you have. Uh, you can buy the individual pieces of software or you can buy them packaged together in Fusion. Hopefully that will help with that question that's come up. Yeah, thank you, Paul. That's a really good um, way of explaining how Fusion works, that it is uh, the combination of Zoom text and JAWS, um, just kind of like Microsoft Office is a combination of multiple products. That's a, that's a really great analogy. Um, so we've got lots of time uh, to go over questions, but let's make sure we, we address these two uh, slides first. So Elizabeth, what's currently up on the slide is the for more info on Zoom Text JAWS Infusion page. Can you just tell us a little bit about those? I know you um, had walked us through those pages on Freedom Scientific, but just if there's any more information about these FAQ pages. Sure. So on each of those FAQ pages, we have information about, and we have the frequently asked questions, things like, you know, who is JAWS for? Who is Fusion for? You know, who is ZoomText for? What are those products? Um, who, who can benefit from them? Where can I find them? You know, just all kinds of questions. So if you have some questions about JAWS, ZoomText, or Fusion, feel free to check out those pages. And then, of course, if you have a question that's not addressed there, uh, like I said earlier, send us an email to training at vispero.com, and we'll be happy to answer that question for you and you know, we can also add uh, additional questions there in the future, of course. So check out those pages to learn what those products are and how you can start using them. Great, thank you. I just dropped that training at vispero.com um, email in the chat to make sure that people have that as a resource. Great, thank um, you. We'll go ahead and end the polling. Uh, for the question, who can benefit from Fusion, we had several answers. Users with advanced or progressive vision loss who need both magnification and full speech. Companies and agencies who serve individuals who are blind and visually impaired. Users who are transitioning from magnification to full speech. And finally, all of the above. And everyone who responded to this poll question said all of the above. And uh, you guys are correct. These are, there are multiple benefits to Fusion that cover all of the spectrum of, of answers uh, that you were provided in this poll. So thanks for, for dropping in and making sure that you um, answer that poll to let us know how we're doing in this, is this webinar. So um, Elizabeth, do we have time for just a few more questions? Sure. Um, when you boot up your computer, how does one turn on JAWS? It does not always boot up by itself. That is a great question. So in JAWS, um, and you can do this for Zoom Text, you can do this for Fusion as well. But in JAWS, if you specifically want to boot up JAWS, you go to um, you, you go to Options, the Options menu, which if you're running JAWS in a separate window is Alt O. If you are running it from the system tray, you can press Insert J, which has been showed earlier, will access the context menus there and you go to the options, it'll say options submenu and you go to basic and then there's some options there for when JAWS starts and you can have it start uh, on log on, which you definitely wanna do. And then you also wanna tell it to, to start after log on so that it starts, it lets you know when you need to type a password and then it, it runs after that. And you can set that to all users after log on, or you can set it to a specific user. Um, so if you have a, a one student, for example, who uses it and needs it to come on you know, automatically, you can set that for that user or you can set it for all users. Great, so, thank you. And one more thing I also wanna point out, I'm sorry, is you might also want to set hotkeys for either JAWS, ZoomText or Fusion, whatever you're using, all three. Um, 
And to do that, you go to the desktop and you find the application you want to set the hotkey for. You can right click it. Or if you're using JAWS, you can press Shift F10 to right click. You can uh, go up to properties and then where it says hotkey, you just type in the hotkey you want. For example, Alt Control J for JAWS. Go to apply and then uh, OK. And it should set that. So that way, when if JAWS doesn't come up for some reason, you can use that hotkey to start JAWS. Great, thank you. Thanks to that uh, audience member who, who dropped that question. And I've also made sure in the chat you have a link to where our handout is for this webinar. Uh, and you can always go back to past webinars specifically on JAWS or Zoom text. There's lots of information in those handouts that, I'm, uh, that you can readily access stuff that's uh, also going to be on the Freedom Scientific training pages, but we do have specific handouts for some of the webinars that we have presented on these products. Um, a, a question has come up about the, the voice assistant. Is the voice assistant specific to Fusion or is this something with JAWS or the new Zoom text? It's uh, it is available in, in all three. So with uh, JAWS 2021, Zoom Text 2021, or Fusion 2021, that voice assistant is uh, is available. So if you're running JAWS by itself, um, or Zoom Text by itself, the voice assistant is available in both of those. Starting with JAWS, starting with uh, 2021. Yes, and at the risk of setting off a voice assistant, if any of you are running that right now. So for JAWS, it's Sharky. And if you say that command and you have voice assistant on, that voice assistant will start listening. And then it's Zoomy for Zoom text and uh, Fusion. And I just set mine off. <laughs> I just... It also does make it a really great uh, tie-in with the training page being surfs up. I do love that <laughs> with Jaws in and. Yeah, it's, it's a catchy, it's mascot. catchy. Great, um, another question that came in, how is Jaws different from Narrator or NVDA? Well, they're all screen readers. They just all have, you know, may, may have different uh, capabilities uh, like I mean they all read the screen but JAWS is a full screen reader JAWS has uh, capabilities that other screen readers may not have with the ability to to have scripts written for specific applications you know if something is is not accessible then it's possible that someone who knows how to write scripts can can script write a script for that um, JAWS has, you know, there's a lot of keyboard commands. You just have a lot of really in-depth things that you can that you can do with JAWS. Great. And one final technical question: uh, Does Zoom or Fusion invert pictures in a Google document? Good question. So, if you are using um, Chrome, there is a, when you first start Fusion or, or, uh, or Zoom text, uh, the first time you go into to Chrome, you'll be prompted to, uh, to install a, 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 an extension in Chrome called the Smart, uh, Zoom text Smart Invert uh, add-on or extension, I believe, in, in Chrome. And so what that does, it allows you to, if you have that um, that extension installed in, in Chrome, when you toggle between uh, color enhancements, you know, on and off, if, you, if you're using inverted colors, it won't invert the color on, it won't invert the picture on the page. So what you'll notice is once you, once you install that, that add-on um, and then, you open Chrome and there's an image. If you toggle, if you toggle colors on and off, if if the if the image is uh, inverted, just refresh the page with F5, or click the refresh button, and then it will uh, it will it will display the picture in its normal colors. But the rest of the the browser will be in, uh, or the 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 rest of the web page will be inverted. But you have to have that out on, and uh, it. 
the it's only available in Chrome that Smart Invert. Great, that's awesome to know. And one final question as we wrap up: What is the difference between JAWS Home and JAWS Pro? Um, Elizabeth, do you know that? Off Sorry. The top of your head? Sorry, I was muted. Um, yeah, so JAWS Home is for, you know, home use, personal use. Um, Pro is for commercial use. And so, you know, if you're, if you're using JAWS just at home and, and you're going to have it, you know, on your computer as you're working, you have a student, you know, who's working on assignments and things, you know, JAWS home would, would be a good fit if, if it's going to be used for, you know, employment and, uh, you know, maybe some other situations like that, then pro is what you'd want to use the commercial, the commercial JAWS. Great. Thanks for taking that question, Elizabeth. Sure. That was a good so question. to wrap up today, um, Fusion provides the features and benefits of Zoom text and JAWS in one package. As Paul explains, like buying Microsoft Office, you get Excel, you get Word, you get all sorts of programs in one. JAWS and Zoom text can be run as separate applications or used together as Fusion with that license. Fusion helps users transition from using screen magnification to a full screen reader. So for someone who is experiencing vision changes, uh, it can help not only with the transition from magnification to screen reader, but can also help someone whose vision might uh, deteriorate during the course of a day. Fusion provides simultaneous use of magnification and full screen reading users with advanced or progressive vision loss. So it has many uses. Um, and Paul, I'm going to hand it back to you uh, for these final slides. Okay, thank you. So let's talk briefly about annual licenses. You're familiar with them most likely. And um, there's a lot that could be said about them. Uh, what we'll say today is if you have interest in purchasing an annual license from APH uh, for the latest information on availability, uh, please contact Jim Sullivan. Uh, his email address is jsullivan at aph.org. That's going to go in the chat. Uh, Jim is part of a lot of our webinars, so that may be a familiar name to you. Uh, he can give you the absolute latest information on getting a license from the portal. So contact Jim Sullivan if you have questions or uh, concerns about that. And uh, especially if you're not familiar with how to use it and you want to make a purchase. And finally, there are two products that we offer besides the software uh, with a partner partnership with Vespero. One is the VideoMag HD, a handheld video magnifier for $495 available on Quota. Uh, you can use it to take images and save those images and magnify them. Great for students, uh, small size, portable on the go magnifier. If you need a full featured desktop magnifier, we have the Jupiter available for $3,295 also on Quota. It is meant to be a desktop uh, so it's much larger and it is uh, going to do even more magnification uh, that both of those are available on quota thanks to a partnership with Vespero.